So a while back, I made a video highlighting various bluebird predators. These include raccoons, different types of snakes, other known predators. And what wasn't on there was the house sparrow. The house sparrow is a known threat to bluebirds among one of the bigger threats. And they're not just a threat to bluebirds, but also other cavity nesting birds. They've even been known to fatally attack open nesting birds like robins and morning doves. So since they're killing other birds for nesting sites, does that actually add them to the list of predators? To answer that, we have to look at how the predator-prey relationship is defined. Classically, predators are organisms that will hunt, kill, and eat other animals for food. This is one of the most familiar ways of looking at this relationship where one organism is the food item and the other is the hunter. I do want to be really transparent about all of this and explain too that there are studies that document predators not always eating their prey or that the predator will go attack multiple animals more than it could ever eat, kind of like a killing spree. But when we look at one species and its relationship with another through a wider scope, the general motivation is clear, and so is each species' role in that relationship. Another really helpful way of defining a predator comes from a professor at Northern Arizona University who said, in predation, one population is the resource for the other. It's simple, it still represents our classic understanding, but it roots down just a little bit deeper. It also shows us that predators may not necessarily eat their prey, though they mostly do, and instead the prey item is some kind of resource for the predator. He also brought up another natural relationship that birders are very familiar with, and that's competition, which he says is when individuals seek to obtain the same environmental resource. Looking at who or what the resource is makes the relationship become clearer to us. We can take this idea now and examine how bluebirds and house sparrows interact in order to determine if a house sparrow is actually a bluebird predator. So with house sparrows and bluebirds, one organism is not the resource for the other. The bluebird is not the resource or food item for the house sparrow, though I'm sure that if a house sparrow fatally harmed a bluebird, that house sparrow may also eat or pick out it a bit because it's a house sparrow it eats anything but eating the bluebird or intentionally using the bluebird as a resource is not the primary objective of the house sparrow when it attacks the house sparrow's objective is the nesting site this is the same resource that the bluebird is using so i wouldn't technically classify the house sparrow as a bluebird predator because they're not intentionally hunting bluebirds for food or intentionally using the bluebird as some kind of resource instead house sparrows are competitors. And I know that this is a topic that so many of us are really passionate about. So if the notion that the house sparrow isn't a bluebird predator is upsetting you before you leave this video, know this. Classifying them as a competitor doesn't somehow make them less threatening or less dangerous to bluebirds. I'm definitely not trying to excuse the threat that they pose. Instead, I'm just trying to inform really about the different natural relationships that exist in nature. Think for a moment about house wrens. Many of us have seen the results of their competition and the threat that they bring to birds like bluebirds, chickadees, and tree swallows. While I know house wrens are not quite the same, they're a native bird and they don't usually pose a threat to adult birds, but I do use them as an example of how dangerous competition can get and how dangerous that relationship can get. There's also intraspecific competition that can get pretty gruesome sometimes. This is competition between the same species. A familiar example is when a bird fights another bird of the same species to defend its territory. The resource is the territory, a resource that both animals are competing for. So going back to house sparrows and starlings even, the trouble with this competitive relationship is that it throws it off the scales significantly, which is also why they're classified as an invasive species. And they've been dangerous to North American ecosystems pretty much right at the time of their introduction in the mid to late 1800s. In fact, I found an extensive report from the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Division of Economic Ornithology and Mammalogy from 1889 that crowdsourced information nationwide for testimonies and observations of the house sparrow, also at the time mostly called the English sparrow. In addition to personal observations, publications were also reviewed with a few summarized in the report. 
I'll have a link to this in the description along with a link to a summary of this nearly 400 page report. The reason for this massive data collection was to evaluate the house sparrow here in the US because even back in the 1800s, their presence was hotly debated. And it's no surprise that the result of this, even back then, found overwhelming evidence of house sparrows causing ecological and agricultural problems in the US. These guys have been a long time threat, making it really easy to want to say that house sparrows and invasive starlings are predators because that can get the message across to people who may not realize the problems these non-native invasive birds cause. And I'll agree that classifying them as a competitor doesn't quite pack the same punch in everyone's minds. A lot of people look at a competitor as something that just uses the same resource as another organism. And that's really it. Maybe they use the same food or use the same habitat space, but I don't think we all realize how directly fatal competition can be for another organism or even both organisms. At least I never thought that when I was first learning about birds. Interestingly, when we think of predators, a lot of times we think of apex predators, gray wolves in hunting packs or tigers or a great horned owl in the bird community. Something that doesn't always cross our minds as immediately is that bluebirds and other songbirds can be predators too. So if you haven't noticed yet, I've been associating the word predator with a relationship, and that's because it really is a relationship that we're looking at. If we look at the relationship between an owl and a bluebird, the owl would definitely be a predator, and the bluebird, being the food resource for the owl, is the prey. But if we were to look at the relationship between a bluebird and a moth, the bluebird is now the predator, and the moth is the prey. It's actually really, really fascinating. And if you go deeper into the topic of animal relationships, it gets even more interesting and complicated. Not only is there the predation and competition relationships, but if you remember back in school, we all learned about other relationships like parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. Bird watchers and bird landlords will see brood parasitism a lot famously with a brown-headed cowbird laying an egg in another bird's nest for the host parent bird to raise it at the expense of their own natural young. The cowbird can also illustrate commensalism when we look at their relationship to the buffalo or even cows. Commensalism is a relationship between two species where one species benefits from but does not harm the other. With cowbirds, they would be seen on the backs of buffalo and would eat insects off of them. And not just off of their backs, buffalo could stir up insects for cowbirds. Okay, so I am getting a bit carried away here, so let me walk it back to the house sparrow and just kind of sum it all up. In the end, predator-prey concepts describe a relationship that if you were to visualize is a vertical movement in which one animal hunts, kills, and usually eats the other animal or uses it as a resource. So visually, we're moving down. A competitive relationship is visually horizontal, where two species are targeting the same object and therefore exist on the same level together, if that makes sense. With that in mind, it would be more accurate to describe the relationship between bluebirds and house sparrows as competitive. But given the invasive nature of house sparrows as well as European starlings, this competition comes with very heavy ecological costs. And because of that, just because we're technically describing a non-predatory relationship, it doesn't make it any less threatening. Finally, these natural relationships can start to get really complex and deeply intertwined and networked, and sometimes it can make it really hard to classify things. If you're interested in more information about bluebirds, I've been adding videos to a playlist with facts and care information, so you may want to take a look. And if you want to learn more about managing house sparrows, I also have a growing playlist, but I do want to warn you that some of you who are new to managing house sparrows, that some of the topics in, and the content on that playlist can be a little difficult to hear. So if you want to check out that one, click on it, but maybe pause the first video and look at the list that's on the playlist in there. And then you can always pick and choose what you want to see and, and find out. As always, thank you all for watching and taking the time to learn.